Hello everyone. So lately I've been doing some shop organization. Um, I recently just kind of put this together. This is just all of the pieces and stuff that go with my table saw that really didn't have a good home. This video isn't really about this. It's already done. It's fine. It's a very simple project. It's just a nice thing that I did for myself. But there is another little thing up here that I'm making that I thought would be a good opportunity to kind of um, share some of my design ideas with everyone and kind of show how I approach 3D printing projects because that thing is going to be all 3D printed. So let's dive right into it and I'll show you how I'm going to be mounting a dado stack up on this board. So here is my dado set. As you can see, it is a six inch set. You might be asking yourself why I have a six inch set when I have a 10 inch table saw. Well, the reason behind that is a six inch blade. It's just quite frankly easier to spin. And once you stack up a lot of these, you're spinning quite a bit of mass. And the other reason is, well, because you really never need to cut like a two inch deep dado, or at least I don't. So having a smaller blade, it will work perfectly fine on like, you know, a quarter inch deep dado. And lastly, they're a lot cheaper. So having a smaller, cheaper set is just better for my purposes. So here is what the stack looks like. And if you're unfamiliar with um, dado sets, basically it's just a bunch of different blades and you kind of just pick and choose and stack these all together. Also with the included spacers to cut a dado or a channel. Like, you know, this could be considered a dado. It's basically just a slot or a channel in wood that, you know, another piece can kind of slide into for mounting stuff like that. So what I want to do is mount these kind of, you know, vertically, something like that, right? So I can just kind of slide them off when I'm at vertically. And also I don't really use these that often. So I want them to be um, covered from dust. I don't really want dust and debris to get in all inside of this. They're also very, very sharp. So I don't want to have these kind of out and visible. So that's kind of what I'm looking at. So let's look at some different design ideas that I have. So I think the obvious solution here is just to take a nail or take a screw, put it right there, and then we just hang them up, done, roll credits. But we're gonna go a little bit more complicated than that because I do have a bunch of 3D printers that aren't doing anything right now. So we need to come up with something a little bit more elegant. We could upgrade the screw or the nail to a bolt like this, but we're always gonna have the threads on the end of it and we still gotta figure out a way to kind of put it on there. 3D prints are inherently really weak in these kind of long skinny orientations. So we're gonna have to overcome that. So I have a couple ideas. Let's get the printer going and I'll show you what I've come up with. I really think that every workshop should have a 3D printer. Sure, they're really good at cosmetic or aesthetic parts, but they can also be quite useful for functional parts as well. I just think that when designing parts for 3D printing, you have to keep in mind their pros and cons. There's a lot of weaknesses and a lot of downsides to using fully 3D printed assemblies, so you just have to keep that stuff in mind when designing. So here are the two 3D printed parts. Now let's assume that I just printed it like that. This is probably gonna be the weakest arrangement. The layer lines are printed like this. We have a shear force coming down at it like that. One day when I go to grab them off, pull it, that's gonna snap right off because we're gonna have a lot of force concentrated right at that joint. And even with a fillet or you know printing at a higher infill, that's always gonna be our problem. However, what if we reinforce it? So these are printed so that I can have, don't go anywhere. These are printed so that I can have a bolt that goes through the back. And it might be kind of hard to see, but this actually from this section right there kind of steps down. We can actually tap that. It only taps in about maybe six millimeters. And now we can thread this sleeve over top and now we have a nice strong shaft that comes out of it. So let's go ahead and tap that. Of course you could design this part with print in place threads. I know a lot of people have had success with the threads. This is a 3816, which should be pretty easy to print in place. It's probably not gonna be as strong as tapped threads, but I don't think it's really gonna matter for this. I just kind of like tapping sometimes. If I was doing like a hundred of these, I would absolutely print the threads in place, but doing one of these, eh, I'll just tap it on camera. 
I have a whole video linked down below on tapping plastic, but generally speaking, I always like to use tap magic or some kind of cutting fluid. I tap this the exact same way that I would do aluminum or any other metal. With plastic, it's really important that you don't overheat the material because it's gonna melt a lot quicker than aluminum would. So make sure that you're reducing the friction with some sort of tapping fluid like this, and you'll get much, much cleaner threads, and it will also be a lot easier to do. So I have this um, almost screwed in all the way because I wanted to talk about one other little feature. It's going to be really hard to see here on camera, but if we look in SolidWorks, you can kind of see what's going on here. There is a fillet and a chamfer on each side of this, and they kind of mate together a little bit. So it's a bit of a keying feature to where when this gets tightened in against the base, the two will kind of find themselves and hopefully not move. I don't think it's really like absolutely necessary but with 3d printing it's a free feature it takes a couple seconds to add in there and it doesn't take the printer any more time to do so now we can kind of screw this down in place all the way and we have a really really solid connection between these two So everything fits on here nice. We got a little bit of extra room, which is perfect. So now for the lid. This is the lid, it is basically just this little shell that will screw onto the top right there. Um, I was using two different filaments. I'm trying to use up a bunch of old rolls. This is actually two different blacks, and you can see different filaments print slightly different. So all we need to do is thread that, and we will be good to go. This has kind of an interesting feature on it that, I don't know, the only way to really talk about this is to show the SolidWorks cross-section. This, if we threaded this all the way straight down, we wouldn't be able to get the tap all the way down to the bottom because there's a little bit of a leading edge on there. So I made it this little section to only about like six millimeters or so of that is threaded. So let's get this um, tapped and then get this mounted on the board. It attaches to the back board with these number eight, one and a quarter inch construction screws that just go straight in. Everything else on there has the same screws. And, you know, realistically, this print is probably going to be stronger than the screws. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe the layers will separate and it'll pull out. You know, I could probably do a pull up off this thing. It'll be perfectly fine. Don't worry about it. Um, I tried eyeballing the location, but of course I got that a little bit wrong. So I had to move it up. Um, just, I want a little bit more clearance from that um, miter gauge to come out. But anyway, got it situated, got those three screws in. It works out pretty well. The thread is a bit longer than I would want it to be. Um, I could probably just take this off and cut that down a little bit, but it definitely does work. I could add a little bit more clearance on the shell, but I really didn't want this to be any bigger than it needed to be. So it does kind of come into contact a little bit with the um, foam pieces on the outside, but I'm just overthinking it. It works perfectly fine. It protects them from dust. It does exactly what I want it to do. So hopefully this gives you a little bit better idea of how you can use 3D printed parts in some of your projects around the workshop. I think it's absolutely essential for this kind of thing. This would be a part that would be, I don't know, kind of tricky to make otherwise. And with the bolt in there and incorporating hardware into 3D prints, I think that's kind of the reason I wanted to make this video is to show you that it doesn't just have to be a single 3D printed part. It can kind of be a combination of various things. But yeah, I do think I'm going to end up cutting down this bolt and make it a little bit shorter because the amount of threads on this thing is a little bit ridiculous. But that'll be a problem the next time I go and use this dado stack. So as always, thanks for watching. Check out the links down below and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.